You're listening to Soap Dirt, the latest in television entertainment news. Hey, YNR fans, I have got your early weekly spoilers for November 11th through the 15th. Sharon is un- just unhinged, just off the deep end. Everything is going out of control and she's going to do something unpleasant. And Diane is going to humiliate her son, Kyle, in public. It is Belinda from Soap Dirt. And as we always do on early edition day, we are going to talk about what's happening the rest of this week to set you up for those spoilers for next week. If you're not following us, please smash that subscribe button. Let's talk about what is happening on Wednesday, November 6th on Young and the Restless. So we have Heather's funeral and the after reception at the GCAC. So Phyllis and Summer are getting everything set up. Phyllis is very determined to save Daniel from life in prison for a crime he didn't commit. Summer worries that there's going to be trouble. Phyllis doesn't care, as we all know. And Summer just doesn't think that Phyllis has any facts on her side. She really doesn't have facts. She just has a gut feeling and... They have a call with Lucy, who, of course, is not going to be there for the funeral, but they are going to do a remembrance of life once Lucy is back. And it looks like Lucy and Danny are going to hang out with Paul, who, of course, everything is off screen uh, because they don't want her in Genoa City just because of the whole issue that Daniel is facing. Summer pushes her mom and says, it's about Heather's memories today. Please don't do this. Phyllis is still going to do it. Daniel is at Crimson Lights before the memorial and is talking to Christine. She vows to get him out of this and prove that he's innocent. He doesn't just want the charges against him dropped. He wants justice for Heather. Christine agrees. And she's starting to see what Phyllis was saying about Sharon, which surprises Daniel. And Cricket says, yeah, you know, Sharon was harassing you and Heather and Lucy in public with witnesses multiple times. Sharon's mental state was was undone. Her medicine was messed up. There's just a lot there. And Sharon herself admitted she was the last person to see Heather alive, you know, before whoever killed her, you know, and she's trying to point the blame at Daniel. Nick and Sharon and Faith show up. They are attending the memorial. And boy, that's a little awkward. Sharon really doesn't want to go. And Nick and Faith say, then don't go. And as a matter of fact, Daniel tells Sharon, please don't go to the memorial. Today is about Heather. You being there is going to make everything harder, but she is insistent on going. Nick walks up and asks what's going on. And, you know, Daniel just has to let it go. He just can't get into this. So they have the service at the funeral. And Phyllis, of course, is, you know, her attitude is literally, she says, I can't believe that bitch Sharon showed up, but she was hoping that she would show up. They have the coffin side service. And then when they walk into the reception of the GCAC, Chance tells Summer that he notices everyone is is staring at him. And Summer said, yeah, that's because you arrested an innocent man. Chance doesn't like that at all and says that was the DA, not him. And he's there to pay respects to Heather, not as a policeman, but it's getting messy. And Sharon is completely in shock at the memorial, staring at Heather's photo. Phyllis confronts her and wants to know if that's what Heather looks like when she killed her. And Nick tries to get between them and is telling Phyllis, don't start it. Phyllis doesn't let up, doesn't let up. Phyllis keeps on until Sharon walks away and Faith asks her what's going on. Sharon's lying. Nick's lying. Faith finally pushes and they tell her that Phyllis is accusing her mother of the murder. Faith doesn't like that at all. She thinks it's hateful. They share memories about Heather's life and that upsets Sharon. She goes running out and Phyllis confronts her again and says, you need to confess to what you did so that Daniel goes free and Sharon runs out the door. And that's setting the stage for her to take drastic action. On Thursday, November 7th, Summer again talks to Chance about him arresting Daniel. She has big issues with this. 
Yes, the DA decided, but Chance hasn't followed up any other leads. We know Daniel has alibis. He was in public. There should be cell phone signal. There should be cameras of where his car was, credit card receipts for dinner, the movies, all that kind of stuff. And it's like the moment that Chance found those bloody rags that Sharon turned in, he just stopped investigating. That's what he did. And so... This coupled with Summer being a little jealous over Kyle and Claire is setting the stage for more trouble. Victor is getting ready to show Nikki his big surprise. He blindfolds her, takes her out to an area of the ranch property they haven't been to in a while. And Diane issues a warning to someone that is kind of mysterious. Friday, November 8th, Abby and Devon find out that their wedding venue is going to be the rebuilt ranch house. Victor shows Nikki that he has rebuilt it as a surprise for her. She is touched. They're crying. That's great. She's still going to be mad at him over what he pulls the following week. The week of November 11th through the 15th is when we're going to see Sharon unhinging and Diane doing something pretty bad to Kyle in public. So lots of wedding stuff all week long. Monday and Tuesday, people are coming into town. The actual wedding kicks off Wednesday the 13th, along with the milestone 13,000th episode of The Young and the Restless. Nikki is so thrilled that Victor rebuilt their home. The actors were really excited to see the new set as well. Abby is thrilled to be married there. Devon is still disgusted with Victor in general. Wedding guests include Ashley back from Paris, Tracy Allen, Jack, Billy, Yolanda, and Anna Hamilton, Nate and Audra, Mariah and Tessa, Jill Abbott, Jack Abbott, Kyle Abbott, Claire Newman, Victoria and Cole, Nick Newman. There's not going to be any Adam, Sally, Chelsea, Phyllis, or Sharon. And uh, let's see. Oh, I didn't list Summer. Summer's there too. And Dominic looks like he's part of the wedding. Looks like he's going to be the ring bearer. Diane Jenkins is there and she starts something with Kyle. Brighton James promised there was going to be something shocking, some big trouble at his and Abby's wedding. And it looks like it is all down to Diane. Of course, she would not have been invited. So you got to guess that Victor arranged for her to be there because they have been conspiring to finish off his big revenge plan against Jack, which includes hurting Kyle. Because as we all know, Victor doesn't give a damn about Kyle. This was all about hurting Jack and punishing him because he feels like he had that night of debauchery with Nikki and almost killed her, which of course is a total misread of the situation. It definitely looks like Victor has orchestrated a huge scene at his daughter's wedding. Pretty typical of him to burn down somebody's big day to get what he wants. You know, that's just the mustache. We all know. Summer gets a call during the wedding reception that completely shocks her. Looks like something might have happened to Phyllis. She has pushed Sharon so far at that memorial with her accusations that, you know, Heather's killer may snap and Sharon may do something to silence Phyllis once and for all. She's been talking about it with the voices in her head for a while now. And I think Phyllis has pushed Sharon to the point of breakdown and there is no telling what she's going to do. Thank you for being a loyal listener. Follow us wherever you get your podcast because you don't want to miss the next episode. Soap Dirt is on all the major podcast platforms, including Apple Podcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and more. 